Thank you, Scott, and uh, thanks to the Saikai Society for uh, this honor of addressing you here this afternoon. The old story of the blind men and the elephant reminds us that any complex subject can be approached in multiple ways. And that is certainly true for a subject as complex as human nature. Anthropology has illuminated human nature by documenting universal patterns of thought and emotion across the world's cultures, as, way, as well as the dimensions along which cultures can vary. Biology uh, has documented how the process of evolution has selected the genes that help wire up the brain. Our own field, psychological science, illuminates the workings of the mind by getting people to disclose their foibles in laboratory studies. And even fiction has a role in, to play in illuminating human nature by showing us the universal plots and themes that fascinate people in the world's myths and stories. But this afternoon, I'm going to give you the view from language, what kind of insight we can gain into human psychology from words and how we use them. And I'll be presenting some ideas from uh, my most recent book, The Stuff of Thought, that uses language as a window into human nature. In it, I talk about verbs as a window into our concepts of causality and responsibility, nouns as a window into our concepts of matter, prepositions as a window into our concepts of space, tense as a window into our concept of time, naming things in babies as a window into our social networks, and swearing as a window into emotion. But this afternoon, I'm going to use indirect speech as a window into social relationships. So let me start out with uh, an illustration of what indirect speech is. Many of you have seen the movie Fargo, and you may remember a scene early in the film in which a kidnapper uh, is pulled over because his car is missing its plates. Inconveniently, he has a hostage tied up in the back seat. The police officer asks him to show his uh, driver's license. He proffers his wallet with a license showing and a $50 bill extending ever so slightly. And he says to the officer, I was thinking that maybe the best thing would be to take care of it here in Brainerd, which uh, we all recognize to be a veiled bribe. Now, this is an example of what linguists call indirect speech acts, cases in which we don't blurt out what we mean in so many words, but we veil our intentions in innuendo and euphemism, counting on our listeners to catch our drift or read between the lines. And we do this all the time. I'll give you some examples. Uh, if you could pass the guacamole, that would be awesome. Now, if you think about the literal meaning of that, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but we understand it as a uh, polite request. Uh, anyone who has sat through a uh, fundraising dinner is familiar with euphemistic schnoring, such as, we're counting on you to show leadership in our campaign for the future. Translation, give money. Would you like to come up and see my etchings? <laughs> that has been recognized as a sexual come on for so long that in 1932, James Thurber drew a New Yorker cartoon in which a man says to his date, you wait here and I'll bring the etchings down. <laughs> and then there's, uh, I hear you're the jury foreman in the Soprano trial. It's an important civic responsibility. You've got a wife and kids. I know you'll do the right thing. Uh, which we recognize as a veiled threat. Now, our reliance on indirect speech means that our, all of us are uh, almost all of the time hypocrites. Uh, direct speech is more efficient and theoretically ought to be, be optimal, but we still insist on indirectness, on euphemism, innuendo, and taboo, no matter how much we protest uh, a desire that people just say what they mean, we use and expect people to use indirect speech. And this has been a, this ubiquitous hypocrisy is uh, a gold mine for dramatists, especially of uh, comedies. Uh, my favorite example being a, a sequence from the movie Tootsie, in which Dustin Hoffman is disguised as a soap opera actress, befriends a, uh, a fellow actress play, played by Jessica Lange, and one night during an uh, evening of late night girl talk, uh, Julie says to Dorothy, being played by uh, Dustin Hoffman, late night confession, you know what I wish? That a guy could be honest enough just to walk right up to me and say, listen, you know, I'm confused about this too. 
I could lay a big line on you, do lots of role playing, but the simple truth is I find you very interesting and I'd really like to make love with you. Simple as that. Wouldn't that be a relief? Well, as the plot unfolds, a twist of fate brings Julie together with a now uh, undisguised Michael at a cocktail party. And Michael, who's been highly attracted to Julie all along, approaches her unrecognized and says to her, hi, Mike Dorsey, great view, huh? You know, I could lay a big line on you and we could do a lot of role playing, but the simple truth is that I find you very interesting and I'd really like to make love with you. And before he can say it's as simple as that, she throws her glass of wine in her face and storms away.